Every year, when I start marking assessments, I notice a lot of frustration and self-doubt coming up. How could their answers and their submissions be this bad? Was I not teaching them right? Did they listen to a word that I said? I tried everything to make sure the curriculum was on point. The objectives, the assessments, the learning activities, they were all perfectly aligned. I provide heaps of detail about the assessments. I give them readings, detailed PowerPoint slides, and lots of feedback. I thought it was all pretty simple. There are a few students that didn't get it, but they needed to work a bit harder, right? There were two problems that I was neglecting in my teaching. The first was cognitive overload, and the second was the curse of knowledge. First, with cognitive overload, I was trying to give my students as much content as I could, but there's not a linear relationship between content and learning. It's not like the more you give, the more students learn. Yes, many teachers don't give enough detail, but you can have too much of a good thing. Information is a lot like cake. Some cake is definitely better than no cake. A bit of cake is great, but too much cake can unleash a death spiral of shame and self-loathing. Or is that just me? The same thing happens with learning. When we provide too much information for our students, we can overload them to a point where they feel terrible, incapable, or just overwhelmed. This is because our brains can store about four chunks of information at a time, but a chunk depends on your amount of experience. So there's another factor here that made it hard for me as a teacher. I thought I was only providing four chunks of information. The problem was I had so much experience with the content that each chunk just made sense to me. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to ask John here to knock out a song that he's absolutely sure you and I will be able to guess. We'll try to figure out what it is. I have absolutely no idea. At the moment, without knowing the song, I have to keep in mind that rhythm and use the rest of my brain to scan through my internal library of songs. It's really taxing, but it's how most students feel before they get it, before they've really learned enough for the information to be one chunk. If I talked about a statistically significant result, that was one chunk in my head, and it felt really easy to understand. But for students, they needed a chunk to think about the p-value, another to think about what significant meant, and one each for the intervention and the outcome. Now, what was that song? How did I not get that? Now that the song is one chunk, I can knock it out while hearing the full melody in my head and it's really easy. Have a go. Before you get it, it's hard, but after you get it, it's easy. And this is called the curse of knowledge. When you know something, when you really get it, you forget what it was like to not know that thing and how hard it was to learn. Remember, John thought that we would absolutely get that. As an example, in a classic study, people predicted how long it would take someone else to learn to use a mobile phone. Experts thought it would take only 12 minutes, but it actually took three times as long. By contrast, those who had less experience were far more accurate, guessing it would take a bit over 25 minutes. Experts were cursed by the knowledge they had, and they found it hard to relate to being a novice. Because of the curse of knowledge, when I provided what seemed to be the right amount of information, be it in terms of new content, assessment instructions, or feedback, I would often overload students. Instead, like cake, if you give them a good size slice, they'll love it, but it's about striking a balance between too much and not enough. We don't want to surpass a student's cognitive load. One or two slices of cake is great, but any more and, well, you know, shame spiral. At the same time, there are ways of teaching that make it much less likely that we'll overload students. Throughout this program, we'll learn to teach in a way that accounts for all of our brain's limitations. We're going to use what's called the scissor paper rock model. With scissors, you'll learn how to cut the stuff that makes it really hard for students. With paper, we'll learn what to put on paper, what to avoid and why. With rock, we'll learn how to make things concrete and tangible. And finally, we'll learn what the rules of the game, scissor, paper, rock, tell us about learning. By the end of the program, you'll learn that avoiding the curse of knowledge is a piece of cake.
That's definitely going to be. <laughs>